Chapter Ten of Saverine's Disappearance. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Red Abrus. The Gerard Street Mystery and Other Weird Tales by John Charles Dent. Saverine's Disappearance. Chapter Ten. Number Seventy Seven Amity Street. The next day was Sunday, but this circumstance did not deter Lapierre from hitching up his horse and conveying his guest down to Millbrook at an early hour. The pair called at the house of Mrs. Savarin's father before ten o'clock, and had a long interview with him. Church services began at eleven, but it was remarked by the Methodist congregation and commented upon as a thing almost without precedent that Mrs. Savarin and her father were both absent on that day. The old gentleman was much disturbed by what he heard from Mr. Haskins. His daughter had passed through an ordeal of great suffering, and had finally become reconciled to her lot. To tell her this news would be to open the old wounds afresh, and to bring back the domestic grief which time had about dispelled. Yet his course seemed clear. To tell her the truth was an imperative duty. It would be shameful to permit her to go on mourning for one who was in every way unworthy and who might turn up at any unexpected moment to the destruction of her peace of mind. Moreover, the secret was already known to too many persons to admit of any hope that it would be permanently kept. She must be told, and there could be no question that her father was the proper person to tell her. She would, however, wish to personally see and converse with the man who had brought the news, so there was no time to be lost. Leaving his two visitors to await his return, the old man set out with a sad heart for his daughter's house. He found her and her little boy just ready to set out for church, but the first glance at her father's face told her that something had happened, and that there would be no church going for that day. She sat pale and trembling as she listened, and the old man himself was not much more composed. He broke the news as gently as he could, and she bore it better than he had expected, suppressing her agitation and taking in all the details without interruption. Even when all the circumstances had been laid before her, her self-command did not desert her. Yes, she must see the stranger from Tennessee. Possibly she might extract something from him which others had failed to elicit. Her father accordingly went back to his own home and brought Mr. Haskins over. The three spent several hours in talking of the affair, but the stranger had nothing more to tell and finally took his leave, promising to call on his way back from Spotswood. Father and daughter spent the evening together and tried to reach some definite conclusion as to what, if anything, ought to be done. There could be no reasonable doubt that Randall and Saverin were one. Since there was just the shadow of doubt, and the want of absolute certainty made it impossible for Mrs. Saverin to leave the matter as it stood, she felt that she must know the whole truth. A course was finally decided upon. Father and daughter would start for New York without delay and probe the matter to the bottom. The news could not wholly be kept from the stepmother, but she was enjoined to maintain a strict silence on the subject until further light should be thrown upon it. Master Reginald was temporarily left in her charge. They started for New York by the midday express on Monday and reached their destination on Tuesday afternoon. Lodgings were secured at a quiet, respectable hotel, and then the old man set out alone to hunt up Hitchcock's stable. He had no difficulty in finding it, and the man in charge of the office readily gave him the information he sought. Jack Randall was no longer employed at the establishment, but he lodged with his wife at number 77 Amity Street. The best time to catch him at home was early in the morning. He was of a convivial turn, and generally spent his evenings about town. He was supposed to be pretty hard up, but that was his chronic condition, and so far as known he was not in absolute want. With these tidings the father returned to his daughter. 
Mrs. Savareen could not bear the idea of permitting the evening to pass without some further effort. She determined to pay a visit to 77 Amity Street in person, and if possible to see the man's wife for herself. A servant maid in the hotel undertook to pilot her to her destination, which was but a short distance away. It was about eight o'clock when she set out, and the light of the day was fast disappearing. Upon reaching the corner of Amity Street and Broadway, she dismissed her attendant and made the rest of the journey alone. The numbers on the doors of the houses were a sufficient direction for her, and she soon found herself ringing at the bell of seventy-seven. Her summons was answered by a seedy-looking porter. Yes, Mrs. Randall was upstairs in her room on the third story. Mr. Randall was out. The lady could easily find the way for herself. Second door to the left on the third flat. Straight up and so saying the man disappeared into the darkness at the rear of the house leaving the visitor to grope her way up two dimly littered stairways as best she could the place was evidently a lodging house of very inferior description to be so near the palatial temples of commerce just round the corner the halls were uncarpeted and indeed with, without the least sign of furniture of any sort and Mrs. Savareen slowly ascended one flight of stairs after another. She began to wonder if she had not done an unwise thing in venturing alone into a house and locality of which she knew nothing. Having reached the third story, she found herself in total darkness, except for such a faint twilight as found its way through a back window. This, however, was just sufficient to enable her to perceive the second door on the left. She advanced towards it and knocked. A female voice responded by an invitation to enter. She quietly turned the knob of the door and advanced into the room. End of chapter 10 Recording by Red Abris July 2008